We're coming to you live on August the 12th, 2018. We live in front of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I'm here with my brother, my dear brother, Chief Uzael Ben Lewi of DCB. One of the first things I want to say is people, if you're not here, you are missing something powerful. This particular lecture that we're about to embark on is entitled The Origins of Civilizations, where we're actually looking at the cradle of the ancient civilizations of the world, the civilizations which gave rise to the high culture of our modern world as well as the old ancient world. We're going to be focusing on uh, Kemet, or i.e. Egypt, as well as Sumer, or i.e. the Asiatic provinces in order to come to our conclusions. I'm here with a brother that I know for years, my brother Chris. Shout out to you, thank you for coming through. Uh, my brother is actually of the uh, African, um, matter of fact, I'm gonna let my brother speak and, and tell the people some of his, his, some of his views real quick. Here you go. Peace and love to everyone. Well, my particular interest is the whole continent and actually the whole earth. Um, but Af Africa is the home of all human beings. It's just that people left Africa at different time periods and under different stresses, different cultural perspectives, they became different groups of people. That's right. But we're all one, we're the human species. That's right. I really enjoy the Nile Valley. So my thing was to study ancient Kemet, which led me down further into Nubia, into equatorial Africa, southern Africa. And my brother, Zion Lex, is going to give me some real interesting information. And I cannot wait. And I wish you guys were here with us live and direct. Absolutely. Peace. Let, me ask, let me ask you a question. Why do you think the subject or the topic of the origin of civilization is important for us here today. Um, aside from helping um, to, to uh, be here by providing your presence and providing your support, intellectually speaking, why do you think that you deemed it necessary to come out today? What do you think is so important about this topic and how can it touch modern people, modern day uh, thinking? What's so important about the origins of civilization? Why do we need to assess that? It's very important because civilization as it's occurring right now is predominantly a Western civilization. Uh -huh. And the West has forgotten their roots and it's causing a big disturbance in the world because Africa and African people were the or originators of civilization. That's right. Must be their history must be known and the culture must be known so they can be properly respected and we can we can unify the different so-called races mm -hmm. and we can find a way to live in harmony with one another with right. all our differences That's right. but we must look at the roots first absolutely absolutely so uh, to, to echo what you're saying one of the most important parts of coming here today to do this and demonstrate this high culture is to show commonality. Uh, we're going to point out that which differentiates these two nations or some of the greater nations of antiquity. But we also want to own in on the moral fiber of these cultures. Because the moral fiber of these cultures of antiquity gave birth to the spiritual foundation of the East, the West, the North, and the South, the world moreover. Uh, the entire world benefited from the moral and ethic code of the Nile Valley civilization, the Tigris-Euphrates uh, Valley civ uh, civilizations, uh, as well as when we get into the Jordan Valley, which is another river valley civilization. Right. A lot of people don't know that um, when we speak in, in a collegiate setting, in an academic setting, uh, the city uh, in Israel, um, known as, uh, the name may escape me for a moment, it's going to come to me, but uh, there's a city in Israel that is considered one of the oldest cities in the world, excuse me, Jordan. One of the oldest cities in the world is in the Levant. And by oldest cities, I mean Jericho. By oldest cities, I mean that they have some of the earliest signs of what we're calling today's civilization, such as farming, 
uh, i.e. agriculture, uh, such as a moral and ethic call. They're demonstrating signs of this going back to the civilian period. We're talking about 10,000 BC. So this is very, very important. So yes, we know that the high culture of Kemet reaches its zenith um, throughout the Middle Kingdom into the uh, New Kingdom. And of course, the origin is pre-dynastic Egypt and the Old Kingdom. But we know for a fact that everywhere you find black people in the world, we are aboriginal to every part of this world. I'm looking at Kemet today to speak about its highs and its lows because the order of the day, as I always try to convey, is objective scholarship. You know, so that's what's most important to me today. And um, we're incorporating some special tools. I'm a student now of the Medunetta, going on two and a half years. I've been studying by myself for some time, but I actually recently acquired a teacher. I've even done a demonstration on the Medunetta. I received some feedback on it, some good, some not good. But nonetheless, I'm pushing on to add my contribution to the world scene to assess some of these ancient texts so that we can actually employ some of those ideas to empower us today. Um, I think that one of the most pristine um, avenues that I'm going to attack today is some of the misappropriation of knowledge, truth, and, and understanding when it comes to Asiatic and Hebraic culture. Because we've heard several Afrocentric teachers teach us that Asiatics have no high culture of their own. That everything that made them great came from external sources. So we're going to actually come today to what would be the primary source. Museums hold and host a lot of primary documents. In this museum, like many museums throughout the world, are actually taking our high culture and putting it on a pedestal and selling it back to us. Something that the world may appreciate, but, of, but as Africans and as Africans of the diaspora, we are here um, in the spirit of reclaiming our legacy, reclaiming our identity, and reconnecting with our ancient roots. So today's tour, today's lecture is going to be powerful bar none. May I say something? Yeah. When most people think about civilization, they automatically assume that you're talking about cities. When I speak about civilization, I'm talking about really culture. That's when you right. have groups of people come together and they work for not the, the individual, but the individuals work for the collective. That's right. To bring about a, a positive human experience. Me, particularly, I really like, you know, pre-agricultural um, pre societies. I like the hunter-gatherers, you know. When you're going down to like the Twa and the sand um, in southern Africa, mm -hmm. and you see how these people lived in harmony with the earth and the rhythms of the earth. And um, actually, when we started creating cities, that's when we started creating social stratification and things okay. kind of changed, okay. you know. so. The real important thing to realize is that this, the type of civilization or the cultures that we have now, especially here in the West, is a consumerism. It's not a real culture. And it's very destructive to the planet. And in order to save this planet, we have to go back to the roots and resurrect the ancient cultures that lived in harmony. That's right. We have to respect the tree, we have to respect the water, we have to respect right. the air. Or else we will, we don't have to be here. That's right. You know? That's right. We have to follow the laws of the Supreme Being and the way to follow the laws of the Supreme Being is to study nature and be very careful about what we do out here. That's right. Very careful. That's right. Well, I'm perfectly in sync with that. Uh, from someone who stands on the base or the pedestal of the Torah, one of the things that's so powerful about those of us who look at the Torah to carve out some of those ideals you just shared is that many aspects of nature can be seen in the Torah. For instance, we know that the Kemetic community gets ridiculed for animism and the thought behind it and, be, and, and, and misinformation about what it's being conveyed. Mm. So the people of Kemet will have a picture, an icon, or a pictorial representation of a snake. Um, in the Kemetic tongue, in the Kemetic language known as the Medunetta, there's two ways that the actual snake is represented and it produces two different sounds. We have the Jed, which is the uh, cobra and it's standing up it's upright and when it's upright it forms the word jed which means speech if anyone is familiar with biblical thought something empowering should be going on in your mind automatically because you know that from the biblical perspective 
snakes on a whole, or the snake of the Bible that was introduced in the uh, second and third chapter of Genesis, the third chapter of Genesis in the Bible, this particular snake is said to have did what? Spoken, speech. Mm. And in ancient Kemet, the upright snake is associated with speech. Now the viper, which produces the F sound in the Kemetic tongue, is not associated with speech. This is the snake that is on his belly. And just as the Torah relates, right after the snake was cursed, not only did it rid itself of speech, but it no longer stood upright. And we're seeing this high culture represented in the text of the Hebrews, as well as the text of Kemet. And it's only to those who are paying attention to both cultures that we can come to realize that many a time we are saying the same thing and we are seeing the same things, but we're speaking it from different microphones and visualizing it from different lenses. Right. So um, I thank my brother Chief Uzael for coming out here today and I thank the many people that came and we're going to do our thing today. And well, I'm hoping that people come to the follow-up tours that we have. We have a tour coming up um, in September. We have two, two more tours coming up in September here. Then we have a tour at the Brooklyn Museum and then we're going all the way to Boston and Philly and we're trying to finish up in Chicago at the Oriel in Oriental Institute by this coming November. So salute to my brother Chief Uzael of DCB. Salute to my brother Chris and family, we about to get it in.